Hello, I'm Mr. Baker, and this is your Unit 12 Viruses and Bacteria. We're going to be talking about your immune system, prions, viroids, and COVID-19. Your learning goals, identify the structures and the characteristics of the immune system, in particular the th three big types of cells, eaters, helpers, and killers. Explain how the immune system fights infections, such as HIV and AIDS. We'll get in a little bit about vaccines. We'll talk prions and viroids, and then lastly, finish up with some uh, current information about COVID-19. So let's get into the immune system. You have three types of cells, eaters, helpers, and killers. The eaters eat things, and one in particular that you need to know about is called macrophage. He is big eater. It's literally what that name translates to, and it's uh, shorthanded with an M and a zero with a line through it. So if you see that, I'm referring to macrophage. Helpers, they tell the system to build a clone army, and those are a subset called T helpers or TH cells. And then you have killers, killers that kill the virus or pathogens. And there's a type that are like tanks, TK, they're actually T killer cells, and then bombers, who we're kind of putting into the killer category, even though they don't necessarily belong there, but it makes life simple for us. But you can put them in there, and we're going to call them B cells, and they make things called antibodies. In the immune response, the macrophage is going to eat a pathogen. It's going to wander around your lymph nodes looking for T helpers. If the T helper recognizes the antigen, it sends a message mobilizing the killers, the TK and the B cells, and it tells those to build a clone army. After about two weeks, most of the clone army is built up, it's gone out, and it's killed it with tanks, it's built antibodies, and most of the clone army then should be finished and they will undergo apoptosis, which means they do program cell death. A few of these veterans are left alive and these are called memory cells and that's what you want to get. And that is called the primary response. That's a link to an immune system. Uh, I suggest you watch it. We made that a couple years ago in claymation and it looks really cool. If memory cells run across their antigen again, they can immediately move to the clone army stage. They don't have to go through uh, a two-week primary response. This is called a secondary response, and it takes only three to five days. This is why some diseases, when you get, you only get infected once and show symptoms, because the next time you see it, your immune system's there waiting for it and wipes it out in three to five days. The half-life of a memory cell is about 40 years, meaning that half of the population of the memory cells will die of old age in about 40 years. So I had chicken pox when I was eight, and let's just make up numbers, and I had 1,000 memory cells at age eight. When I hit 48, I will have 500. When I hit 88, I will have 250. This is why as you age, you tend to get sick more often, sometimes from diseases you already beat. Like shingles. Shingles comes back for chicken pox. That brings us to vaccines. And the name vaccine comes from vaca, which it should be Spanish, meaning cow. And this was the name given for using cowpox to protect against smallpox. They used to infect people with cowpox, which was a disease that wasn't uh, deadly, but it would confer some protection against smallpox. Basically, what a vaccine is, is a practice run for your immune system. Some vaccines contain the spikes of a virus for practice. And when you show the body the antigen, you run through the entire primary response and you produce memory cells. And this way, when the actual virus shows up in you, you are able to fight it off in three to five days and show no symptoms. These are a good thing. That takes us to prions. Prions are infectious particles made of proteins that can cause other proteins to fold incorrectly. In humans, you get infected by a prion typically by eating a prion from bad meat. This was a problem back in what, the early 90s when there was an epidemic of BSE, or bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Uh, and if you ate a tainted cow that had nervous tissue in it, you could end up with a prion disease. You can also get a very unlucky mutation, turning a good protein into a zombie protein, and this mutation is rare. And what the zombie proteins do, it's the same idea. You're familiar with zombies. So one zombie 
bites one person, they become a zombie, and then they go out and they bite other people, and they become zombies, and then eventually you have a whole bunch of zombies. Well, that's what these proteins do. This zombie or misfolded or mutated protein doesn't work properly, and it goes around and binds to other good proteins, converting them to zombie proteins. They eventually kill brain cells, and, you can, and it takes a long time, so it can sit in what's called incubate, and you'll have no symptoms. Once symptoms appear, they worsen quickly because it's been building and building and building and are always fatal. Why? Because your body has no immune response against a protein. Prion diseases, they all work on the same mechanism with the zombie protein, but they get different names. If you give it in cheap, it is called scrapie. Deer and elk have the same thing. It's called chronic wasting disease, mad cow disease, or BSE. And in humans, if you get the mutation, it's creutzfeldt jakob disease. And there was an indigenous people who, to uh, uh, mourn the loss of their elders, would consume them. And this was in Papua New Guinea, and it was called Kuru. I believe there's more about that in one of the videos you get to watch. There's a picture of it, which we're not terribly interested in going to detail. Here's a picture of the normal protein in blue, and then the misfolded protein in red, the zombie protein. That takes us to viroids. They cause disease in plants, and they can be passed through seeds or pollen. These are naked, single-stranded RNA, SS single-stranded and they don't have a protein coat, and they cause major economic impact because they can stunt growth. Here's pictures of a potato, the potato spind spindle tuber viroid, or PSTV. And that takes us to the pressing matter of COVID-19. COVID-19 is the disease. The pathogen is has been named SARS-CoV-2, named coronavirus disease because it emerged in 2019. And no, unlike I've heard on the news from the White House or a White House spokesperson, there isn't a COVID-1 through 18. Coronavirus got their name because the spikes on their envelope look like the solar corona. I've got pictures up there in the corners for you. It has the largest RNA genome with about 30,000 base pairs, which is like three times hepatitis B and like 10 times flu or something like that. They also have the ability to proofread RNA and keep out mutations that could harm it. And this eliminates most of our antivirals that we have because that's what they do is they induce, induce mutations to really screw up the virus. But this one can see it and then correct it. It is closely related to SARS, which came out in 2003. And the pathogen for SARS from 2003 is just SARS-CoV. And this one for our current pandemic is SARS-CoV-2. It's reported that about 80% of COVID-19 patients have mild to moderate symptoms, while 20% get serious ramifications such as pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, sepsis, and even death. Sepsis is when uh, it causes so much damage that bacteria can invade, and then you get bacteria run on it all over, and that is a very bad complication, and that uh, uh, can ultimately lead to death. Uh, this was a big concern by January 30th, and then the World Health Organization declared it a pandemic on March 11th. It is a positive strand enveloped RNA virus. It uses the lytic cycle, so it goes very quickly. It shares an 80% identity with SARS-CoV from 2003 and is 96% identical to a bat coronavirus named BAT-CoV RATG13. And this strongly suggests that it emerges, emerged from bats. They carry, and what's important for science is that they carry a spike protein referred to as S. And that will cleave into two pieces, S1 and S2. S1 is bind, used to bind to ACE2 in humans, and that is the receptor that it uses to get into cells. And why is CoV-19 or SARS-CoV-2 running so rampant as a, a as opposed to SARS back in 2003, because it'll bind to that receptor 10 to 20 times better than SARS did in 2003. The S2 portion of it is used to fuse into the membrane to actually gain access into the cell. 
SARS-CoV from 2003 seems to only infect deep lung tissue, meaning it's got to get into the lung, way into the lung, past the nose and the throat, way into the lungs. And that is not an easy thing for it to do with all the defense mechanisms that we have. There are four coronaviruses that we know of that cause cold symptoms, and they infect the nose, but they don't get in the lungs very easily. But here's the kicker. SARS-CoV-2 does both efficiently. It can infect the nose and then move to the lungs, and the difference in the disease may be due to where the virus goes. If it stays in the nose, you have a mild case, and you can be an asymptomatic character, Car carrier. If it goes down to the lungs, it will be a very severe form. It can also trigger an excessive immune response known as a cytokine storm. And this, this is your immune system going crazy. And you should have seen this in, I think, either the Ebola or perhaps even the measles video that you watched earlier in the week or last week. And this can cause multiple organ failures and deaths. So this is where your immune system goes crazy and it causes more issues than the virus it does itself. And that's saying something because the virus causes serious issues. It can also infect the intestines, and there's evidence suggests the heart, blood, sperm, eye, possibly the brain, damage the kidneys, liver, spleens, and it suggests that it, once it gets into the bloodstream, it can go anywhere and bind to that ACE2 inhibitor and cause problems. Some nice infographics I found, but uh, the one is too small, which was the interesting one. And it shows here, the one on the left, the family of killers, where it came from, showing the really similarity to that bat RATG13. If you go to sciencemag.org, you can have free resources. So you can click on and see journal articles and uh, the real science going on. I provided you with works work cited, and I chose Nature, Science, and Science as my sources because those are legit and uh, peer-reviewed, or the information comes out of peer-reviewed articles. And that's it. So for your quiz for Section 12.2, we want you to know about the immune system and vaccines. You better know the eaters, the helpers, the killers, the difference between a primary and a secondary response. Throw in memory cells. A little bit about prions, uh, just a tiny bit on viroids, and then the pertinent information on COVID-19. Hope you learned something, and have a great day.